So Hare Krishna, welcome to Matchless Kids channel. So our viewers have a lot of questions. So we thought we will ask you the questions because today a lot of youth they are seeking the answers. They want scientific answers for these spiritual matters. So there cannot be any authority than you who can speak about science and spirituality at the same time. So that is why we would like to ask you these questions, Hare Krishna. Prabhu. Thank you. I'm happy to be here with you to be of some service. So to begin with the first question, is spirituality a science? Is, is spirituality a science? It depends on how we define the word science. If we consider science as a process of systematic, predictable, repeatable knowledge acquisition, then yes, spirituality is a science. If we consider spirituality to be, or rather if you consider science, to be a method for exploring the material world around us. Mainstream science operates on the phenomena called as, on the operational methodology called as methodological naturalism, where science looks for natural explanations for natural phenomena. So for example, the well-known incident where Newton had an apple falling on his head. So at that time, Newton himself believed in God. But when he was looking for an explanation, what made the apple fall? He was not thinking of God as the explanation of it. He was looking for the mechanism by which it happened. So, if we consider science as looking primarily for the mechanisms by which the world functions, then we could say spirituality is beyond the scope of science. Science is one body of knowledge which looks for material explanations for material phenomena. And in that definition, we could say spirituality is out of the scope. But if we take the broader definition of science as any systematic body of knowledge, which offers us predictable and repeatable results, then spirituality, especially in the processes of yoga that are taught in the Bhagavad Gita, it is actually a journey of consciousness. So where there are pathways described, so if we practice spirituality, how our consciousness will become transformed, how we will gain higher insights, how we will, our tastes and attachments will be elevated. These are predictably described. So for example, if anybody practices Bhakti Yoga as described in the Bhagavad Gita, then many of their self-destructive attachments, whether they be to unhealthy habits or unhealthy behaviors or even unhealthy thought patterns, all these will start decreasing and the positive virtues within a person, those will improve. So we could say that science can transform the outer world and spirituality can transform our inner world. So science is the study of matter. Spirituality is the study of what matters. That in India, a lot of people are religious. So they are religious, they are doing different kinds of rituals, different types of pujas, worshiping different kinds of gods. So now where does all this meet? The religiousness, spirituality and sometimes it is also spoken as a superstition also, this religiousness also, in, a, in an extreme way hmm. sometimes. So where does these three things, you know, the religion, superstition and spirituality, are they like independent or okay. interdependent, how are they doing? So, earlier we, we talked the question about is spirituality like a science. So, we could say science has two aspects to it. There is theory and there is experiment. The theories propose certain ideas about the nature of reality. And then experiments prove or disprove that idea. So, we could say similarly in spirituality there are two aspects. There is philosophy and there is religion. So, philosophy gives us propositions about the nature of reality. And then religion is often seen as a set of rituals. However, religion is meant to be a set of practices that give us experience of those higher realities. So, now philosophy is basically something which we comprehend with our intelligence. And that, that gives us a map. When we are doing religious rituals, why are we doing it? Are we doing it just because it's our tradition? It's just because our elders have told it to it. They're doing it just because I feel good about doing it. Okay, all these are 
okay reasons for doing it but the main reason for actually doing religious practices is to get pratyakshavagamam dharma to get higher realizations to get so we could say modern science is experimental spiritual science a spirituality we can say is experiential you get higher experiences so to the extent religious practices are done with philosophical understanding and they are done uh, for gaining personal experience then they become very powerful spiritual tools but if certain religious practices are done without any clear understanding of the purpose or without any resulting experience then they will become rituals and if there is there's one thing is i don't have any philosophical understanding then it's a ritual but if there is there may might be a philosophical basis for certain practices but i don't know that then i do it as a ritual but however if there is no philosophical basis at all it just some people thought we should do like this and start doing like that there's no rational re, rational understanding for doing those things then that is what can be called as a superstition so there is within spirituality itself the capacity for self evaluation and self criticism by which practices by which the activities that are done they can be transformative practices they can be mere rituals or they can be uh, unworthy or unwanted superstitions that's how they can be classified based on rational evaluation of how they are helping us realize the higher values and higher realities of life